Hey folks, I'm Steve Butler. Long before a laptop computer and long before the telephone, you could find one of these in every household. Today, we're building a lap desk. Come see how we do it here in the garage. All right, let's have a look at our project. We are making what's called a shaker style lap desk. And the components consist of, we have a back piece, we have our front piece, we have our two sides or gables, and we have a fixed top, which we'll be routing a pencil groove in, and we have this nice top or lid, which is hinged. It has a little lip on it so things don't roll off. We open this up and we expose a large surface area. And we're gonna be using some shiplap joinery for our bottom piece. Now this area, you can store your, some computer paper, some stationery, a laptop computer. You can put it on top of your countertop and keep your recipes in there. Yeah, I thought this was a great project for an episode just because it showed how to do dovetails differently. You know, there's lots of shows, lots of articles written about hand cut dovetails um, that you're just oversaturated after a while. But there's not too many on cutting dovetails on the table saw. First thing I want to do is to cut the back piece and our two gables to four and a half inches. Now, I've set my saw to four and a half inches. And you want to raise the blade so it's around a quarter of an inch above your work surface or the thickness of a pencil if you're in doubt. Now, the general rule of thumb to using a push stick is, I mean, of course, it's whatever you're comfortable with, but the general rule of thumb is anything that's not as wide as the width of your fist, you should use a push stick. You can put what's called a dead man roller, have an outfeed table to, to catch your off cuts. And that's it. Always wear, make sure you have your safety glasses on. I have my earplugs in, headphones. I'm doing a lot of talking, so I'm not wearing a dust mask. You might want to do that. First thing I'm going to do is fire up our dust collector, and then we'll get these pieces ready. All right, the next thing I want to do is cut the piece that makes up our fixed top piece, the one that we're going to route the pencil groove in. And I set the saw at four and three eighths of an inch. All right, I've set my saw at two and an eighth of an inch, and that's going to make up our front piece. All right, there we go. We have all the pieces that make up the carcass of this project. Now the next thing I need to do is go and cut them to length. Yeah, I call this a shaker lap desk just because I modeled the project after an original lap desk. I saw it at Shaker Village, as well as there's lots of samples of it in books about shaker furniture. It's very unadorned other than the dovetails. And you can make it out of any material. Shakers used a lot of cherry and they used a lot of pine for their lap desk. I have my miter gauge set up in the table saw. I was here, it makes it a lot easier. You could also use a miter saw, chop saw, to cut your boards to length. The first thing I'm gonna do to all the pieces is I'm just gonna trim a little bit off of one end, making sure I don't, you know, shorten the board too much, just to make sure it's 90 degrees, nice and square. All right, now that I have a square or 90 degree end on them all, just gonna take the measurement and cut them to length. Now my first piece makes up the front of the project and I just want to cut that at 21 and 3 quarters. The front and back are 21 and 3 quarters. If I was cutting a bunch of these multiple pieces, I could set up a stop 
either against the fence or on my miter gauge fence so that they're all consistent the same size. But I only have a couple that are the same. So I'm just going to do them individually. So I've made my mark. So I bring my square across. Now I'm going to cut my two sides or gables to 16 and 3 quarter inches long. If you wanted to, I've kept this piece in place, I could put a pencil line right there and take my next gable and butt it up to that. All right, there we go. We have all our pieces cut the width. We've cut them the length. Now we'll just go back to the bench and glue up the pieces that make up our top. Yeah, I've made these lap desks out of uh, a lot of different materials. I've even made one out of poplar. The poplar one, I attached the lid and the top together um, using a piano hinge. Uh, in the, the sample one, in the beginning of the episode, I had T hinges on it, which are more of a traditional hinge. Um, and then I, I went to... Uh, a hardware restoring place and I got some old hinges which we used in this episode. So if you, can, you can attach it many ways. Let's have a look at our top. We are using regular flat sawn material and that's the way it's cut from the log. You know you have to consider wood movement, expansion and contraction with this. If we really wanted to make sure that this top, because it's a larger surface area, didn't warp so much, we could use what's known as quarter sawn material. But we're using flat sawn material if you look under here, I've added some cleats. They're kind of stiffeners and stop this from moving a lot. But you know what? You're not going to stop Mother Nature. It's going to expand and contract. So even with these cleats on, it might stop it from buckling a little, but you're not going to stop it from expanding. So they're screwed to the top, but beneath that there's a little room for the screws to move as this expands and contracts. All right, so let's get started gluing up our boards. Now our final dimension for our top is 22 inches long by 13 and a half inches wide. So I want to make sure I have extra and then we'll cut this to size afterwards. And I'm using three clamps. We're going to have two on the bottom and one on top. And I'm simply just going to move these up and I'm just going to put a small bead of glue on here. Now you can use a brush and wipe this down. And what I do is I just put a small bead right along one edge. You don't want to starve the joint, you want to make sure you have enough coverage, but if you have too much, you just have a lot of excess glue you have to spend cleaning up. But you do want to see some squeeze out, that's how you know you've covered it. All right, you want to make sure you have everything nearby, just in case. So I roll that down, and then that glue rolls down the surface. So I'll bring that up, roll that down, and then what I do is bring them up, and I just slide them along together because when you put the clamps on, these are going to, they're slick. It's going to slide and move on you. So I just create a little friction, slide them over, bring my clamps together. And then what I'll do is I'll start with the top one. And the reason we have bottom, top, bottom alternating is when you clamp these together, if you only had them on one face, say on the bottom, it could go boing and pop up on you. So this top clamp stops that from happening. And what I'm looking for is I just want to make sure it's level. Just feel it in the middle, make sure that one's level. You don't have to white knuckle on this, but you want to make sure that we're getting a good joint. You can see that squeeze out already. That's what you're looking for, just a nice bead of glue. Now I'm going to do the bottom ones, making sure these boards are flush together. I also want to make sure that these boards are sitting nicely on the clamp. And if not, what I'll do sometimes is I'll have some C clamps or small clamps and I will clamp the board to these pipe clamps. 
There we go. We'll put this aside, let this cure for about an hour or two, and then we're, we're ready to work it. In the meantime, let's go cut our sides. All right, the next thing we're going to do is cut the taper on our sides. Now, the taper is cut at a 10 degree angle, and I want to make sure that I leave enough at the top of our gable to support that top piece where we're going to route the pencil groove. Let me show you what I did. I made a jig to cut the taper on the table saw. Now, if you don't have this or you don't want to do it, you can simply draw the outline of your sides right on the wood itself, go to the bandsaw, and cut it off. It's only two pieces. But if I want to make more of this project, I have my jig, I hang it on the wall, and it has everything I need on it. It tells me the length, the width of all, basically all the instructions I write on here, and then I lacquer it so it'll never fade. So you can see, here's my taper. That's why it was important for me to cut the sides, the gables, to exact length. They'll fit in here. I've got some pieces of wood here to hold it in place, and then my lockdown or my toggle clamps to keep it in place. You can see where the taper will start, leaving us that flat area for our top piece to rest on. All right, I've set my saw at eight and three quarter inches, my saw fence away from the saw blade, to accommodate my jig. I have a dead man on the offside of my table saw to help support this. Go ahead, do the same thing for the other side. There we go. We have our two gables cut. The next thing we need to do is to lay out our dovetails on our side pieces and on our front and back. All right, now that we have our gables cut, it's time to lay out our dovetails. Now, dovetails are made up of tail pieces and pin pieces that fit together. They're cut on a taper and they form this locking joint that you'll never pull apart. You see a lot of these on drawer fronts, so you don't pull the drawer front off. Now, the only difference is I'm gonna lay them out just as if I was hand cutting them, but instead of using my hand and a saw, we're gonna use the table saw. The blade for the tails will be tilted to 10 degrees, and then when it comes time to cutting the pins, we'll straighten up the blade to 90 degrees, and we'll use the miter gauge and tilt it to 10 degrees. All right, so the first thing I need to do is Take my marking gauge. Now this, I've set this to the thickness of my wood, in our case, half an inch. And I'm just gonna draw a line. You know, this really isn't necessary when you're cutting them on the table saw, but it gives a look of hand-cut dovetails. And I'm just gonna score this board all the way around. It also gives you a visual reference when you're raising the blade. All right, there's a lot of templates out there that have one to six ratio on one side, one to eight on the other side. You can make your own. I've cut this at a 10 degree angle, which equals the one to six ratio. Put a little lip on it so it just hangs over the board. Or you can use a traditional bevel gauge, which right now is set at 10 degrees, which equals our one to six ratio. Okay, what I mean by 1 to 6 or 1 to 8 are the ratios of the angle. Um, there's one that's preferable for when you use softwoods, and there's one that's preferable when you use hardwoods. In our project, we, we did 1 to 6 ratio, and all that means is, I'll use this square as a demo. You go up 6 inches, there's my line, it stops at 6 inches, and you go over 1 inch, and you just combine those lines, you draw that angle, and that is the degree, the angle you're going to cut your dovetail on and your pin. You can almost see it right here in that sample. So that's it. You can figure out a formula to make these even. I'm just kind of eyeballing it and I just want a nice 
my space. I'm just going to put a little X there so I know. Like I said, it's easy to get turned around. Now the X represents the waist cut, where I want to cut that. Now you can see that. They're not, you know, they're different widths, but that doesn't matter. I'm going to cut them all individually as long as I cut the pins to match that. If you want them all nice and the exact same size, you can work out a jig or a formula to do that. So now, just going to put this in the vise and carry that line over with my square. And when we get to the table saw, you'll see why it's important that I carry these lines, I wrap them around the board continuously. And there we go. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that to the end of my other gable as well as to the front ends. All right, there we go. We have all of our tails marked out on both gables, on both ends of both gables. Next thing we're going to do is go to the table saw and cut them out. All right, let me show you what I did. I tilted my blade to 10 degrees, and that 10 degrees equals our 1 to 6 ratio. You can see when I put that up against the blade, it's the same angle. I've also made a sample piece. You definitely want to create a couple of samples and test them out on that first. So I have that at 10 degrees, our saw blade at 10 degrees. My miter gauge fence is at 90 degrees. Now the reason I wrapped our lines right around is because eventually I'm going to run out of fence and you need that good support. I've also have a couple of pieces of sandpaper on there to hold my board, help me hold this board securely on here. All right, so I'm just going to bring this up to my line. Now some people, instead of a nice sharp pencil, will use um, a, a marking knife to get a nice thin line. This is fine. All right. There we go. You can see, now you can see the angle, that bevel, that cut right up to my line and then the top of the bevel is just hitting my marking gauge line. Now, I'm going to turn that around to keep the angle the same. Do the same thing on the other side. There we go. There's our tail right there. All we'd have to do is just cut off the, the, the cheek, the shoulder, pardon me, and we have our dovetail. Okay, so I'm just going to do that to our side pieces. If you feel a little insecure holding this by hand, you can simply put a little C-clamp on there. Now if you happen to hit the pencil line or go over the pencil line, it doesn't matter. You're going to use this as a template to lay out your pins. So you just have to make sure the pin matches that shape and you're fine. So there we go. Look at that. We have that shoulder. We just have to cut off the center piece there and that shoulder. And you can see here, I'm a little bit ahead of my line, but that doesn't matter. Like I said, I'm going to use this to trace out the markings for my pin. So as long as they match, that's it. So now I'm just going to go ahead and do the other end. So there we go. We have our tails cut. I'm just going to go ahead, do the same thing on our other side and then we'll go to the bench and trim off those shoulders. All right, just gonna go ahead and cut off these shoulders. Now I could do this over at the table saw while I'm there after I finish the tails, but because this is cut on an angle, it wouldn't cut accurately. So it's just as easy to bring this over to the vise and knock these off by hand. Alright. 
So we'll just finish this last one and I'll go ahead and do the same thing to the other gable. You can see all that shaping up. I'll just take a chisel, knock out the center piece and we're all set. All right, that looks great. Let's just have a look. Nice, there we go. I've cleaned out our waist from the center tails. We've knocked off our shoulder pieces. There we go. All right, just gonna use our tail pieces as a template and transfer those lines onto our boards and then we'll cut the pins. All right, I'll just flip it around end for end and do the same thing on this side. All right, before I go ahead and do the front, I'm just going to bring these lines down. with my square and then wrap them around the other side just like we did to our side pieces. We're going to cut out those recesses afterwards and that'll create our pins. Now we're just going to do it on our front piece. Definitely mark it out. You can see your waist. There we go. We now have our pins drawn out on our front and back pieces. We're just going to go to the table saw and do the same thing as we did for our gable pieces. The only difference is instead of tilting our saw blade 10 degrees, it stays at 90 and we tilt the miter gauge. All right, that looks great. You can see once we cut away the waist piece, how that will fit together. Awesome. I'm just gonna go ahead, turn this around, do the same thing on this end. Do the exact same thing on our front board. When that's done, we'll go ahead to the bench and glue these pieces together. All right, I went ahead and I cut out our pins on our back piece and I cleaned them out with a chisel. So now we have our back, we have our front piece, and we have our two gables which have our tails to our dovetail set on them. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and glue these up. Now, if you have to use a mallet to drive these home, then you just might want to take a chisel and pair off a little. It's just a little too tight. You don't want to bruise the thing, the pins or the tails. That looks nice. Now you don't have to rush. I mean, the glue will set up a bit, but you don't want to panic. You want to take your time, make sure you have everything. A mallet in case you do glue up the wrong part and you can take it apart. Your glue, cloth to clean up any excess. You don't need to reef on these. You don't need a ton of pressure. Just enough to make sure it's on there. All right, let me show you what I did. I took our desk out of the clamps and then I went ahead and I attached our fixed top to our desk. I just attached it with a bead of glue, a couple of brad nails that will get filled in later on. I also added these strips or cleats. They're flush to the bottom of our desk and that's where we'll attach the bottom to. Now, the top we glued up earlier, I took it out of the clamp, sanded it, and I just added a little strip on the front, a little cleat on here to stop things from rolling off, and I added some support cleats to the underside of it. Now, the magic number for this project is 10. We have our dovetails cut at 10 degrees, our gables are cut at 10 degree angle, and then I went ahead and I just beveled the back of the top to 10 degrees, and that allows it to sit nice and flush to our fixed top. And then we'll just get our hinges, we'll screw on our hinges, and then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to route out on our fixed top a groove, what's called a pencil groove. All right, let's get started. Yeah, I mean, we don't really need a pencil groove in the top of this lap desk nowadays, but you know what, I, I like routing it on there and having it on the desk. It just breaks up the surface. Other than that, it's just a very plain looking top. So it just, it just breaks it up and adds another element to it. 
All right, now we're gonna route our pencil groove. I have a core box bit set up in my router, and I'm gonna take two passes. This isn't a plunge router, so I have my, my straight edge guide on here, which I'm gonna rest against the back of the, the desk. I'm gonna set this in place. I've drawn a couple of pencil lines, my start and my stop pencil line, and I'm simply gonna drop the bit down, make one pass, come back, drop the bit down further, and make two passes. You don't want to hog off too much wood in one pass. You can get a lot of tear out. Right, that looks great. Just going to bring the bit down a little further and do a second pass. Alright, that looks great. Let's go back to the bench and we're going to attach our top. As far as the finish goes, I just like to use oil. I put a coat of oil on it, maybe two coats of oil to add some depth to the wood. And then I just finish it off with a coat of wax and buff it up with a denim cloth and it really brings up a nice sheen, a nice patina to it. Alright, I went ahead and cut some boards and attached them for our bottom. And I also installed the hinges to our fixed top. I think this looks great. As usual, I had a blast building this project with you. I hope you come back, see us here in the garage. Said, hey, hey, how are you? It's been a long, long time. I just found your number, but I dropped you a line. You know I've been out on this road such a long, long time. Just wanted to let you know I'm doing just fine.